Sensitivity is intelligence. With grace and skill, you have abundance. Welcome to the Psychic Hour. Host Kelly Brickle is a psychic medium healer, numerologist, and teacher. Her passions are learning about the soul and energy. Whether it's through spirit, emotion, or vibrational numbers, there's always a pathway of information waiting to help. Now, here is your host of the Psychic Hour, Kelly Brickle. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Psychic Hour on WLTK DB Let's Talk Radio. I'm recovering from a cold, and you can hear it. You can probably hear it and see it. But uh, the show must go on, everybody. So welcome, welcome. Hello, Nikki. It's great to see you. I just returned from Tampa, and what a wonderful trip. Um, what an amazing, wonderful trip. It was um, about six days. Um, it was a four day class with Lisa Williams. Hello, Mary. Hello, Kevin. Hello. And, um, it was all about unleashing the psychic, unleashing your mediumship, um, and being really in touch with those energies. Um, we did sound bowl healing. We did trance healing. That was like a separate add on to the class that just combined itself. And um, we did um, exercises within opening up the intuition and just trusting yourself on a deeper level. And that's really all it is. I'm, I'm, my, my hair wants to do fun things today. So hello, Raven. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Stephanie. It's great to see you. Hello, everybody. So um, I have a thro frog in my throat and it's healing and I'm, I'm truly blessed today is the the first day that I'm I'm up in Adam. So, you know, you just got to trust in the universe. If you have something going on, they will lead you to having it come to fruition, having it come together. And uh that's really, you know, the faith which we walk by life in. Um signs from spirit that help us to do that are all around us. And I know we're always learning how to look for signs for spirit. And one of the topics of the day that I wanted to dive into, because we always start that way, we're just affirming what is around us and welcoming that into our life. So leading up to the events and also within the events um, and after the event, I was seeing so many feathers and I want to talk about that because I just think it's a fun story and that you know, always reaffirms my faith. I don't need to see a feather to have faith, but when I see it, it sure makes me feel good. And they were coming in like gangbusters. So right before I left for uh, Tampa, I noticed this, oh, it's a story within itself. It's really cool. So I was at a previous event. So whenever there's an opportunity that presents itself and it just seems like a, you know, the timing's right. Sometimes the price is right, right? Um, all these other factors, I go, all right. And location, right? I go, I'm going to that. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I went to another event. I participated in it. Um, it was a mediumship demonstration. And so the medium was um, doing his, his show and he was doing a great job and he was getting contacts um, really with like kind of the first connection, it was like, I feel someone's like in this degree of the room. Um, this is who the spirit is. And the first person you'd call upon or he'd invite up to the microphone, it would be like the match, right? So going further into the show, there comes this place in time where um, he puts out the spirit and it's like the first person, he's like, no, this isn't for you. The second person, no, this isn't for you. And so we're going into the third person and he's just like, you know what? I'm going to let the spirit go. We're going to we're gonna call upon a new spirit. And so I'm in the audience. I'm like, no, 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 no. You finished that connection with the spirit. There were still hands up. You know, there were still hands up and people were ready, ready to claim the spirit. And so right as he says that, you know, we're all human, right? As he says that, a ginormous, I'm not even joking, 
a ginormous feather fell from the ceiling and it didn't just float, it fell like it had weight to it, which is really cool. And sometimes how these feathers go, if anyone has had experience with feathers, there's either sometimes there's the flow of the feather, you know, how it comes in through the air, but a lot of times when they drop from the ceiling, it's like they have this um like this rocket attached to them because a feather would not float like that. It it just it doesn't float like that. Gravity does not work with a feather like that. So that's an additional symbol for me that it's not really following Earth's rules. <laughs> At least that's how I wrap my head around it. So this ginormous feather drops from the ceiling when he goes, no, I don't, you know, I'm going to move on to the next spirit. And it falls in vicinity to someone who has their hand up. And let me just illustrate how big this feather was. The feather was, so this is my head. The feather was like, and it was in front of me, like, I don't know how many feet, but rather close, but not super close. It was close to the size of my head. It was like, yeah, it was close to the length of my head. Um, it wasn't the, the the whole entire size, but you get it. It was huge. The feather was huge. It was a white feather too. And I'm not the only one that saw it. My husband saw it because bless his heart, he, you know, he has his mind open and he comes to these events with me. He's a sweetheart. And other people in the audience saw it. Not everyone did, but the people around you saw it like gasp. They're like, whoa. Okay. So the next connection this guy makes was another spirit, but guess who it was for? It was for the person that the feather dropped in vicinity of nearly right over their head of. Okay. So the spirit was like, I got you. We're going to make sure this connection sticks. And what is even more amazing was the medium didn't quite realize that it was for the, that, that this, cause there was many other people in the audience that had their, their head, their hand up. Um, so the, the medium didn't realize that, you know, this person was actually, um, connected to the, the previous communicator. So, um, spirit found a different communicator to come in for the same person. Okay. So it all worked out. And that was the validation. That was the validation. I knew I was like, in some way it has to go back in some way it has to go back. But did I ever expect there to be such a ginormous feather? It's the biggest one I've ever seen in my life. Um, that have, have, has come from the ceiling. No, I never expected that. Now, very cool. But, um, so going forward towards the event, um, I saw, I would see like little feathers in certain places, like on the ground and stuff. So I was like, cool, we're, you know, full speed in motion. And, um, when I was at the event, I saw a flood feather, excuse me, it floated, it floated this time. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a dropper, but it floated diagonally right into my line of sight. And it was so, so small. It almost looked like lint. It was so small. But if you picked, because I picked it up out of the air, I was like, I need to see this. I need to know what this is. I'm like, I'm curious. Get curious with your signs, everyone. I scooped it up in my hand as it flew towards me, my face. Um, And it had the tiniest little structure of, you know, a feather where it's like, it almost looks like a bone and like extending ridges and the feathers, right? Right. It had the structure of a feather. So I was showing people and they were like, oh, so tiny, right? It didn't hit quite home for them the same way. And that's okay because feathers weren't their sign. The feather is my sign and no sign is too small. It really is not. So as I was packing up, um, I actually was in a bed, uh, excuse me, a hotel room with two beds. So there's two queens, right? So the first night I was in one queen and I was like, oh, okay, well, there's something odd with this bed. So I was like, I'm going to go over to the other queen, right? So I pick up my luggage and I put it on the other queen. And like at this point, you know, I had uh, stripped down the bed, um, like sheets and the, the comforter, right? So I could see what was on the sheet exposed. And so I just put down my um, my luggage. And so as I'm packing at the end of the event, I pick up my luggage. I'm like, oh, right? Because it was heavy, six days worth. And I look underneath and there is 
a very um it's like a medium brown feather it's a it was like stout it wasn't long but it was like a thicker feather and it's 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 stark against the white sheets and i'm like that was not there before you know i came and i don't have like a uh, i don't have a, a luggage that can really pick up a feather uh, as well so good lord where did that come from that's so cool all right so i'm going down i share this story with a couple people as i come downstairs because there's some of us still left um after the trip dispersing right waiting for our flights and so they're like that's cool right because i captured the feather and i shared it with people but again, feathers are not exactly their signs. So as I'm talking with these lovely ladies, um, a feather rolls in because we're like in a half circle. There's three of us at this point. A feather rolls in. I go, oh my gosh, a feather. And they go, whoa, there's a feather. And it stops exactly in the middle of our semicircle. And they go, whoa, is this your life? And I'm like, I guess, I'm, I don't say I guess it has go, yeah. I'm like, this can this is, can be your life too, right? They're signs from spirit. And so at every turn, at every turn, I was blessed with a super cool sign from spirit. And I just wanted to share it with you. So um, when you're around the energy of what you love and believe in, uh, there's validations of plenty, and I just wanted to share some of mine. Sometimes they're more physical, and sometimes they're more emotional and um, ethereal. But I'll share them with you either which way all the time. And so, thank you everybody for coming. Hello, Jordan. Hello, Jackie. Hello. Someone loves being around you. <laughs> well, uh, gosh, um, I'm just I'm I'm uh, I'm affirming the love. I will I will take the love. I love to share the love. Hello, Angela. And so we're going to be right back in a moment. We're going to be back with the wonderful Pete Orbia. And my goodness, it's going to be great to talk with him. We, um, I was on a show just recently, and what a wonderful host he is. So I am honored to have him on the flip side um, and to hear what he's up to and also hear about his story. I I don't know completely about how he got started, but now he's he's in deep. So it's going to be a good story with his background for sure. So we'll be back in a moment. Thank you. If you're a fan of the paranormal world, then you'll love WLTK DB Talk Radio. Talk shows bringing you the latest on everything paranormal, cryptozoological, metaphysical, true crime, psychic readings, and more. The truth is here and now on WLTK DB Talk Radio at WLTKDB.com. And we're back just like that. So I want to bring in Pete. I want to bring in a warm welcome to Paranormal Pete. I love it. Representing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, I'm, too, I'm doing too many things here. <laughs> no, no. It's amazing. You know, the, the station helps each other out. Pete is actually being behind the scenes as well because he's a true hero and champion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> seriously, it's seriously, I appreciate it. We're, it's it's teamwork today. So amazing. That's right. You got to root for teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. So I want everyone to um, give a warm welcome to Pete, and we're going to introduce him. Uh, Pete Orbea is a paranormal researcher and medium based in Port Gamble, Washington. He loves re leading the popular Ghost Walk Special Investigations and coordinating the Port Gamble Ghost Conference, which has given him the opportunity to develop his skills for communicating with investigating the paranormal. You can also catch Pete on the WLTKDB 
show Paranormal Pete with uh, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And he has wonderful guests. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Glad Absolutely. to be here. Glad to be here. Happy yeah. to have you. Happy to have you. So, so Pete, from the from the top, okay. How did you get into? The, yeah, we're we're just diving in. I'm gonna yeah. ask you how your day was in a second. Don't worry, okay. we're gonna go right. past, present, and future, but we're starting okay. with the past. <laughs> Excellent. Take me, take me just to the beginning. Did you ever see yourself within this work, and how did it happen? Uh, first question, no. <laughs> <laughs> never saw myself in this work and 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 i was super skeptical of it but I, I think it's only because i didn't have much exposure to it growing up so i just didn't know much about it so i was skeptical of it because i didn't you know know about it uh no as a kid i i never would have thought um i was raised in a house with science fiction lots of science fiction and so you know ufos extraterrestrials all that stuff was like i yeah that's out there i believed in that you know and i i that sort of stuff all opened my mind to the possibilities of more is out there than we know more is out there that we can see hear and feel so i was open you know i was open in that sense and then uh <clears throat> i just thought i had a weird and wild imagination and i could like I just thought it was weird. I could visualize people. I could see uh, people as different animals. And I just thought, oh, it's my imagination. And, and you know, I did a lot of people watching with my grandma. <laughs> One of my grandmas, we, we would always go to a movie. And then we'd go to the mall. And we'd sit there and do what she called people watch. And so I could imagine uh, all these people as, you know, what kind of animal would they be? Uh, and just randomly throughout my existence, you know, like I would see somebody, I guess in my mind would be like, Hmm, how did I imagine that person? You know, who are, where are they from? And then, so fast forward until, uh, in my, in my thirties and uh, I'd started paranormal research. I, you know, started working in Port Gamble, which is notoriously famously, I don't know, however, however you want to put it haunted. And which, you know, I started to meet mediums and I started to meet investigators and good skeptics and the whole thing. Right. And so then I'm, I'm having all these experiences leading the ghost walk tours and, you know, quickly, you know, went from an open skeptic of the paranormal to a believer pretty fast <laughs> from the experiences. And then I was invited to um, speak at the Oregon Ghost Conference in Seaside, Oregon. And so I went to do a presentation on Port Campbell and, and I saw a guy there that I never met, didn't know he existed before that conference and he was offering a special price for readings. And I thought, well, you know what? I've never had a reading before. Let's see, let's see what it's all about. You know, let's, let's try this out. So I purchased a, a reading and, and we went to sit down. Uh, and his name is Seth Michael, great guy. Um, he sits down and he writes down a bunch of stuff and then he goes, okay, well, you're going to do your own reading. And I was like, what? And he said, you know, he's like, you don't know what you got going on around you, blah, blah, blah. So you're going to do your own reading. Who, what, who do you see? Who do you see? And so I opened up to it and I described this man and I described a horse. And then Seth showed me everything he wrote down before we started. It was exactly what I was seeing. And my stomach sank. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, what's going on here? And he's, he said that I'm I'm supposed to do this work as a medium. I'm supposed to, you know, take this journey and that I'll be doing readings professionally within a year. And he was right about that. And just the whole rest of the reading, it was, it was incredible. And so my I didn't know my dad before, my biological dad before any of this and i'd searched over the years just randomly well the name of this guide that i was supposed to learn hit me like a ton of bricks and it was the word choctaw and i was like oh, sounds like i've heard that before you know i'll go with it so i get home from the conference after well the rest of the whole conference i was felt emotionally drunk 
I just didn't know what was going on. I have all kinds, just butterflies, a million butterflies. And I just felt like I was going to like, you know, vibrate apart because I was just feeling staticky and everything. So I get home, I'm all weirded out. And I decided I was going to search for my biological dad one last time. And then I'd be done with it. And so because I was in Oregon, he ended up being in Oregon because I was down there for the conference. My Facebook, my search parameters were a little different because I had made some connections down there. And I see this guy with my dad's name and he looked exactly like his picture that I had. So I'm like, oh, whoa. So I found my half sister that I knew about and I ended up finding her through his friends list. And I reached out to her first. And so we talked and she goes when we got on the phone, she says, I'm going to his house right now. I'm going to put you on the phone with your dad. And she gets there. And she's like, well, let me go in. Your brother's out here, which I didn't know I had. And he's like, your brother's out here. Let me talk to him. So I get on the phone with him. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm this random guy. Uh, you know, I'm trying to, I don't want anything. I'm just trying to learn where I'm from, learn my story. And the first thing he says, well, let me tell you, you're Choctaw. And I about fell over when he said that. And um, then it just kind of went from there to where, like, anytime somebody would come over to our house, have dinner, hang out, their great aunt so-and-so would show up. And I would just, like, say, does anybody know this name? Oh, yeah, that's my grandpa. And I'd be like, oh, he died from this. And then just right, you know, and it just kind of went from there. So, but the first, <clears throat> when I made the connection with my bio biological father, it made me think back to the first time, my first ghost experience when I was about seven years old, driving through Northern Arizona. We were headed to Sedona. I was with my grandparents. I would go down and spend the summers down there. So it was one of those trips and we're driving. It's flat, you know, on the side of the roads. You can see quite a while. And there's the little Adobe houses every once in a while. And all of a sudden these two Native American men appeared right in the middle of the highway, like in traditional wear. And they were faced away from us, but they turned in towards each other and looked back at us. My grandpa slammed the brakes on. And we got to them, and they just, poof, they just vanished. And I wasn't quite sure what I saw. And my grandma was asleep. And my grandpa looks at me. And this is a different time. He's from a different generation. He said, did you see them old Indians in the road? And I said, yes. And he just said, okay, don't. Don't tell your grandma. <laughs> She'll, get She'll get freaked out, you know, what happened. So once I kind of had this awakening, it made me go right back to that that experience and go, I that was one of my guides. I know that one of them was one of was my guide who facilitated the opening for me. Absolutely. Because he's moved on. He's 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 not he was just there to facilitate an opening. But exactly. looking back, I was like, I knew it. That guy is, he was what he was my spirit guide for that. So it was just crazy, but it's just kind of gone from there all these years. And I really enjoy um, doing readings. I just did a gallery reading last Friday uh, with another reader. And it was, there was so much energy in there. It wiped me out pretty fast because um, I had not been feeling well before that. So I, my strength wasn't up, but there was so much energy in there. And it was, a, it was, it was a good gallery reading. It was cool. And, and so I enjoy doing that and doing readings for people. And yeah. That's, and then that's, you know, I work for this town that's really haunted. So I have my own <laughs> normal lab. Can you, right can, here. You tell me, can you tell me about that too? So I yeah. want to, yeah, like go through your history because you and Port Gamble, they're so closely associated. But how did you come to Port Gamble? Um, where are you originally from? Are you from Washington, from another area? Nope. I'm a, yeah. I'm a cornbread fed guy from Idaho. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm from Boise, Idaho. I uh, moved up to Washington in 1999. So I've been here longer than I lived in Idaho now in Washington. Wow. And wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I met my awesome wife, Molly. Uh, in 2002, and then a couple of years after that, she started working for a small business up here in Port Gamble. And then um, ultimately, I did construction for quite a while and had a, had a framing and siding business. 
and then got out and worked with her at the at a sign shop here in Port Gamble. And then we were we lived about 35 minutes away and we were like, what? why are we commuting? We both work here now. And so we got into one of the houses up here and we've lived here since 2007. And then I started working for the town uh, in 2011 because uh, we are business owners and needed, you know, with the economy around 2009 to 2011, needed something to be a little more steady. So I got a job with the town uh, working in the weddings and events and you know, as a seasonal and like just, you know, setting up and tearing down type things that, you know, setting up events and breaking them down and uh, quickly, you know, learned of some of the hauntings here. And so when I started working for the town in 2011, the ghost walks had just started a season before. And uh, so it was actually a part of my job because then when I started working there, the manager was like, well, who who wants to do the ghost walks? I don't want to do them anymore. And so I said, well, I'll do them. And that was in 2011. So I learned the tour and then started giving the tours. And, and so this is my 12th season um, of doing them. And I always, once I, you know, got in, started having these experiences, I, I told the spirits, you know, if you help me, I'll help you and I'll continue your story and I'll share your story. And so I worked up from the seasonal weddings event person now I'm kind of the mayor of the town. So I'm the town manager. So I joined a long line. It's a really old town. It's one of Washington's oldest towns. It was founded in 1853. And so I joined a long line of prominent people in Washington state history, especially in the logging business who uh, ran the town here. So it's, it's an honor. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you've developed um, the town, actually, I would imagine, because you have um, great say over, hey, this would be good to explore, because uh, you developed the conference, correct? Uh, well, the conference started the year before I started working for the town, so oh, I wasn't okay. there. I wasn't there for the very first one. I wish I was, because it okay. looked like it Take was so much it. fun. Take me so, through it, yeah. Yeah, so I started, you know, it was part of the, it was part of the town events, and so it was part of my job to to at that time to work the event and so then it was so much fun and i just kind of because of my interest in it you know uh my manager kind of let me run with it and um because of the interest and i started meeting all the people and and you know joined a team at that time and um so then i just they just kind of gave me the leeway each year look more and more and then i've been running it you know, pretty much ever since. So it's, uh, you know, I, I run it with the weddings and events team now, but um, it's sure fun to put it all together. It's exploded though. You've added so much more. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we, we are lucky to have such awesome speakers that come to the conference and share their experience, share their work in the field and, and so it's it's not really you know it's it's the people that come and speak it's the people that come to attend you know i don't it's not just one person i think it's everybody helps to make it better you know each year in, in the experience so i'm just kind of like the circus ringleader <laughs> so, yeah. well mary's saying that you always do a great job each year so that's a testament oh, thanks to mary, how your yeah. energy has shaped and defined right and i'm sure that I'm sure that there's new projects coming up too. Well, there's, you know, our town is a, it's a really cool place to visit. There's so much history here. There's really cool shops. There's really good restaurants. It's a true small company town. It's a company owned town and it's owned by a timber company. And so it's kind of funny. We get to say we're a timber company that does weddings and ghost conferences. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many people could say that. <laughs> Why not, right? Why yeah. not? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And so I'm always, you know, uh, my job is basically the property manager for the whole town. So, you know, there's a lot of maintenance things, infrastructure, uh, you know, there's the weddings and events business. There's uh, the marketing for the town. There's, you know, advertising graphics that, you know, I there's a lot of different things. Um, 
that, that we do here. I've got a great weddings and events team and and great maintenance team as well. So it's just kind of, you know, overseeing all of it, making sure everything's in the right place at the right time and all that kind of stuff. So it, it can get crazy. Trust me, it gets crazy, but it's also fun. So being like a mayor, the head of your town, and being a medium and an investigator and having a radio show, how does it work all together? And a father and a musician, I, I'll keep going. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but it works um, because my family's awesome. That's probably why it works. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot, but, you know, uh, my wife Molly is, is very encouraging and supportive and, and I like to joke that, you know, she's kind of my biggest critic, but my biggest fan as well, because she always try, she's always curious how things work. So she's always, you know, early on in my psychic journey, she was testing me like really hard. <laughs> <laughs> But only because she wanted she wanted to experience to believe, and then she did, and okay. and so because of them and my I got two little girls that are awesome, and so between them, um, we just we just got two boy kittens, so now the numbers are even, three boys and three girls in the house, so I'm not outnumbered anymore. <laughs> you just you got two boy kittens. Yeah. Um, how old? Uh, they're about four months old. We did. We got them a month ago. Oh, oh my and goodness! They're, they're little holy terrors. Um, oh no! But they're awesome. So, because of my family is how it all works. I don't know. I don't know how it. I just get through it. So I have a band. <laughs> you know, we we record. We play shows. You know, so that's kind of that's a good outlet. Music's always been like such a good outlet. It's like the best drug in the world to play music. And so, yeah, it, I don't know. I just make it work. I'm busy. I'm a busy guy. <laughs> a lot of um, mediums, they'll play music at the beginning of their show to raise the vibration. Or I actually know a lot of fantastic mediums who do have either a background in or they still facilitate, um, whether it's through an instrument or actually using their voice. Uh yeah. There's a crossover between music and mediumship. There really is. I've always kind of thought that, and the more people I meet and talk to, it's it's just obvious. It's obvious that there's there's a crossover. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of mediums that I know they play music, they play instruments, they you know that's a part of them. And I think why i think it, it works that way is because music and the vibrations of music are the same as energy vibrations and when you play music and you learn music your brain develops in a certain way and it communicates the, the right side communicates with the left side a little differently than somebody that maybe doesn't play music however you can really love music and be passionate about it and have that same connection but i think you know just from the wiring in your brain is a little different, which opens you up, and then they're just melded together. I do think it has something to do with that. There's um, to have a good, not, not, it's not required, but let me know what you think. Um, to have a good connection with mediumship, a lot of times you actually need to have that clear audience, that communication with the spirit like really open. So people who are really sensitive to sound or clear audience, a lot of them have a very natural um, connection when they're communicating with spirit. They can yeah. have that dialogue back and forth. Right. Yeah. And, and often I think those people are the ones that would say, raise their hand if you said it to a room, how many people talk to yourself inside your head a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Write that in your voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So th there's definitely a correlation with music and, and, this, and spirit. Um, oh. So, yeah. We have a question. Okay, we can intertwine some questions within the conversation. That's always fun. Um, Angela asks, uh, interesting, I've been, I'm being guided more lately to use my musical talent and voice while in meditation with my heart open. There you go. 
Pete, you want to dive into that? What you're getting to, to with when you're with within your own life experience, if you've um, had similar instances? Well, I I don't think I can point to one example, but I would just more more or less point to the whole shebang. Yeah. The whole experience. I started playing music when I was young. Um, I think since we started when I was like six, playing instruments, something like that. And, you know, played in band all through school. Uh, Yeah, I did um, Drum Corps International, which was like professional marching band. Um, I went to college for music, you know, played there. And uh, it's always been there just the same as I think spirit was always there. I just didn't necessarily see it or feel it. But I think music helped keep me open. Always kept me open. So, and I always respond, like, when I'm trying to calm down and ground, I respond to sound very well. (laughs) So, binaural beats, um, you know, or like, you know, where it sounds like you're in a a meadow and where there's little birds chirping, like that sort of stuff, like, really works well for me, I think, because my ears tuned. It's a saving grace, I think, um, for a lot of people. And some people are more auditory and some people are more feelers and some people are more visual. And I think for the individuals who are very auditory, like sound has been like their haven. That's what I hear from people. You know, I I admit I'm a more visual person than I am an auditory person. And sometimes I just need more quiet. My husband's incredibly auditory, and he goes, like, you're killing me right now. And I'm like, I'm sorry, okay. We'll compromise what we need to do, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like negotiations. It's, but, um, yeah, like, it helps him feel like himself music. And for me, sometimes music music scatters myself. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Well, I, I sometimes, if I need to focus, like, buckle down on a project or something, and I need to get through something, I'll put on... I love heavy metal and, <laughs> you know, death core and all that stuff. And it, it helps me focus, believe it or not, the crazy <laughs> drumming and all that. It, it zones me right in. But then sometimes I'm like, if I'm stressed, I want to put on like reggae or something. Or, you know, one of my favorite bands is 311. You know, put some 311 on, you know. Uh, so, it, you know, but I do use mus- music to affect myself in different ways. And, you know, I'm, as far as mediumship goes, I'm much more clairvoyant than clairaudient, which is weird, but. You are. See, I wouldn't have expected that with you being a musician and everything. Wow. And, right? Oh, wow. Interesting. I'm Wow, this is fascinating. And uh, awesome that you love 311. Did you ever, <laughs> when, when there's the famous lyric, amber is the color of your energy. Right. <laughs> Right? Did that get your head going? Like, no. oh. <laughs> no. it always, as a kid, it always did for me. I was like, amber is the color of your energy. <laughs> you I, know? Yeah. Like, I, I, when I listen to music, I'm mostly listening to the music and not the mm. vocals. I, it's just how my ear is. And so, no, it, it, it didn't affect me at all because I was listening to the drums and the, you know, bass and guitar mostly. <laughs> They have a very pleasing tone, though. Yeah. I think they're they're fantastic. Yeah, um, they're they're good for any situation. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Oh wow, you got um, you have a hello from the New Bridge Radio Show. They're asking Todd. Oh, I thought they were saying, Todd, are you there? Well, yeah, I would hope. <laughs> Todd's not here today, but he's here in spirit, and he's usually yeah. On the ones and twos. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, I read that as Pete for some reason. I think my brain is still recovering. Isn't that sure. always fun? Mm-hmm. Um, so you're sharing the healing energies with me, Pete. You're grounding me. I appreciate you. Oh, good. Um, please. <laughs> please <laughs> Speaking of grounding energies with a mediumship, too, as well, because, I mean, hey, that is that is truly healing. Um you said just recently you did uh, a gallery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, it, it was fun. There was, 
it was a smaller gallery, uh, but I've, I've done this particular one at this particular place. Uh, I think that was my third time this time. Um, and I read with uh, McKenna Grace um, and McKenna Long. Um, so I read with another reader, which is always interesting because it's kind of interesting to see how you team up and this person sees this part of this, you see a different part of it or you get, you know, different people. So it was a lot of fun. You, I love gallery readings because you never know who's going to show up to, right. to come through for somebody yeah. like an ex, you know, that comes through a lot, like an ex person, you know, I thought they hated uh, me, you know, <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> it's true. That ha yeah, no, that happens a lot of galleries. You're right. Like someone from the past. You're right. It's uh pretty normal <laughs> yeah so there there was fun and, and it's you know we had some good messages come through and and uh, you know delivered some some good messages i think that people were you know hoping to hear from from the people they were hoping to hear from and but there was so much energy i felt it about an hour before it started i was driving on my way down there and it just felt like a tornado whipping up in my stomach and i was like whoa so i started you know, paying attention to what I'm seeing and hearing or, you know, reading in my internal mind here. And and we got there and the, it was just the place was buzzing already. And then as people came in and then during the reading, it was just like this whirlwind of energy in there. And it was like it zapped me. <laughs> I made it a, I made it about an hour and 20 plus minutes. And then I was just like, Phew. You know, I feel like I, I was drinking water, but it just it zapped me. So it was, but it was fun. It was cool. You know, it, it, it will do that depending on different circumstances or like yeah. if I've just, the busier I am, the more, you know, like you're, you're, you're doing a workout with your, your energy. You're yeah. truly doing a workout. Like, yeah. um, you're grounding so much energy and that does take an enormous load. So yeah, absolutely. I can understand the feeling. Um, do you find you have so much fun at the galleries? I just enjoy them because it's, it's meeting new people. You know, I, I enjoy that. Um, it's kind of, it's a challenge, you know, for sure. And so I like the challenge and like I said, I, I the best part is you don't know what message is going to come through. You don't know who it's going to come through for or who is coming through. And so it's just, it's kind of fun. It's like a, you know, my kids get, you know, blind bags, right? The, the toys where you don't know what's in it, but it's in a series of something. And so you, it's a, you're blindly opening it, then you see what you get. And so I kind of, I kind of like that aspect of it. And um, I think that's how, at least in my perspective, I'd love to hear your perspective. I feel like that's how it always is. You know, there's people who have been developing for, you know, two years to 20 years. And really, when you do a connection, everyone's in the exact same boat. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Individual readings are the same way. I guess I like it for a gallery because it's on a much larger scale. I guess, yeah. you know, but yeah, it really is individual readings. Yeah. You're, you don't know what you're going to get, but you have to be open and be ready to, you know, sense what the, sense what's coming through and pass it along and don't filter it, you know? So yeah, every reading's like that. You never know what you're going to get, but when you do it on a grand scale, a grander scale that yeah. I kind of enjoy that. It's fun. I think you make an important distinction. Um, so for the connection, yeah, there's no difference between, you know, your fresh versus your experience. But doing something like a gallery, that takes experience. You have to work, learn how to work with different people's energy. You have to learn how to deal with different personalities. So um, the way that we evolve as mediums, it makes us you know, be there for another person in a completely different way than we're there at the beginning of our journey. And so can you talk about that, how you've really learned to be, um, you know, a more connected person and a more developed medium? Well, as far as being a more collected person, that sort of thing, 
I feel like the whole journey's like made me really look inward, right? Because you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know inward before you go outward. And so, in that sense, that's been a big change for me. Just like understanding myself, and I think that has helped develop mediumship. And I hope, well, I just hope to always develop, always grow, always develop, never stop learning. But all this journey has definitely like changed my perspective on like uh, religion and like what happens to us, you know, when we're gone. I feel a lot better, <laughs> by the way, uh, about all that. Um, but it, it makes you look at things a little differently. It makes you look at situations that happen, maybe it, it, just to get a different insight into a decision or like there's always another place to get an insight if, if I'm questioning something. You know what I mean? Like if I'm come up to something in my life and I got to you know, try to figure something out, you know, it's it's cool to be able to like get some other insight, but it also makes you like turn around and like, no, you get the insight yourself. You know, it may come from spirit, but the, the fact that you have the, your own realization, I guess. Like if I'm struggling with something, but then I, through mediumship, you can almost kind of have your own realization, your own epiphany, your own, aha. And then that makes that whole situation and everything past that, you have that perspective from the aha moment to, to kind of rely on. I hope that made some sort of sense. It, it does. No, it does. It's like no matter no matter what, even if you're helping people in this, this work, you're just you're going to get something for yourself. Like yeah. you're you're dealing with awareness. So things awareness. are going to great word. That's that's probably a word I should have said. An awareness to things. You awareness said it great. to life. You know, awareness to life, being more present, you know, that sort of thing, you know, making more time for that, you know, which can be a challenge. But yeah, awareness. I love that. That's a great way to describe how you can develop. You're more aware, you know, the more you develop, the more you're aware. Like you're talking about your sign, your feathers. Absolutely. You're the more, you know, you just keep going along. It's just you're more aware. Right. So like you're probably. You, you won't just see the sign, you'll see the sign and understand what the sign is for, <laughs> you know, all in one shot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think absolutely. That's, hopefully that's how it will go for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that it's fully possible. And, you know, the more we're in touch with ourselves and with spirit, like we're, we're bridging the gap, right? And a lot of these things, I actually think we have trickles of knowing, but we just have to like, bridge the gap more and that yeah. like that healing of awareness goes oh yeah oh that's what that meant or like i get it now right yeah yeah there's a yeah. lot of i get it now <laughs> aha you have that epiphany there i'm gonna take this question too but i want to come back to it because uh you mentioned previously that you have a lot more peace with your own spirituality so i want to get jesse cat's question and then go back to your own spirituality okay. so jesse cat is and also thanks everyone for the merry Quish christmas and happy holiday um wishes uh jesse cat is asking yes thank you um did you lose a lot of close people with spirituality you want you want to take that or you want me to go Both. <laughs> okay i'll gladly take it but yeah uh, I want my answer is no i actually okay. gained a lot more i feel like i gained a lot uh, well, not close people, but I gained a lot of new friends from it, but I did not lose a lot of close people with it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, no, I actually love that perspective. I really do. I So I feel like it's, it's a multifaceted answer, so I'll try to put it into a nutshell. And thank you, Pete, for saying that, because I think at this point I've gained more. Honestly, I have. So um, I think where spirituality led me originally, I didn't know it was spirituality. I feel like I've always been connected to, I guess, at a young age, I was like fascinated by religion and concepts of spirituality, but I was still learning about what it was, right? And so when life ushered me forward in a way, 
I did feel like I was losing people, but it didn't feel like anything was being done to me. I was just like, oh, my life is going away where I can't really control this. And then as I was finding people within my life, I didn't, I met a lot of people, but I didn't feel like I connected to people on an emotional level, um, but on a spiritual level. So it actually did feel a little bit lonely, but now as I'm keeping going, I'm finding a lot more people within my life. It comes full circle. It really does. Yeah. So for you, it was just, um, whoa, like this opportunity. Yeah. The universal two by four smacked me upside the head and said, you got to do this now. (laughs) That sounds comedic though. (laughs) Yeah. Did you ever think life was playing a joke on you at first? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I I kind of right. You know, I once I figured out what was going on with me, then like I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I accepted it. I you know pretty quick that okay, well, this is something I'm supposed to do, so I'm I'm gonna do it. So, so you got you got smacked into clarity with that two by four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That you know, I don't think I was totally lost before that, but I think it was the right time. Maybe I think it was it was supposed to be at that time in my life. That's that's powerful stuff. And then right, the rest kind of showed its way to you. Um, mm-hmm. If if I may ask, because you're talking about, I feel as the awareness came into my life and the connection came into my life with spirit. You're talking about, I actually felt a lot better about a lot of things. Uh, like where I go, where people go. Um, can you talk about that within your personal, I guess, findings or feelings with spirituality where they've led you? Yeah, I mean, it, it really made this, the journey, what I was seeing and experiencing, you know, doing readings for people or just in general, it was like, I felt a relief of like, um, you know, even if, like kind of no matter what we do there's there's a place for you that you know that there's we don't end and that we do have the opportunity to help our loved ones on the other side we can check on them we don't it's not like you're totally gone and that you know made me feel a lot better with that with religion it was like I've had a bunch of readings where the person, the spirit coming through is showing me their rosary beads or they're holding a Bible or the Quran or, you know, they're, they're holding on to that part of themselves that helped make them up, you know, their beliefs and, or their faith. And so, you know, and with religion, I was kind of like, well, that's, you know, that's cool because if you, if you truly have faith, you know, and hope, you know, the good parts of religion, if you've really got that faith, you can take that with you because it's kind of a part of you, you know, and and then so it kind of was, you know, and I'm not religious or anything, I guess I'm spiritual, I'm not, I'm not religious, but it just kind of made me go, yeah, okay, you know, so what I'm thinking about how things really work is not necessarily what, you know, dogma is what people say it is what churches preach it's not you know necessarily like that but that you still get to um, be yourself and hold all the love and the hope for everything you know you take that with you and so I thought that was cool but it just really made me feel a lot better about death and like to where you know I just wouldn't want to die because I don't want to miss out on time more time here like with my kids and my wife but at the same time i know i could harass them (laughs) from the other side (laughs) or like a pet we lost a dog last year um our boy he was 14 and and uh um it made me feel it was sure it crushed me and it was sad and everything but at the same time i was like he's gonna hang around he's he'll be with me you know he's he's around i've heard him i heard his collar I saw him peek around our chair a couple months ago. Like I saw him and then he was gone and I was like, okay, he's, he's, he's hanging around, you know? And so that helps me with that loss of the dog knowing, you know, this, it's the same with, 
you know, my grandpas and stuff that, you know, that I really cherished. And like, yeah, someday I'll be hanging out with them again. And I know they're around. I know they come around. So in those ways, it changed how I think and, and, um, you know, certainly made me look inward. And so I guess I've learned to kind of understand why I act certain ways in certain situations. I've been able to kind of like understand that. And so when I'm having that, you know, that reaction to something, I, oh, yep, I know why I'm having that reaction. Let me change this. And then I feel better. And so this whole thing has kind of helped with that in a sense in my own personal growth as a person. Absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of people feel like scared and confused with concepts of death and spirituality sometimes. And within personal experiences, um, there's just a comfort. Mm -hmm. There really is. And at first, did you believe? So, for instance, I had experiences and I was like, sure, I believe them on one level, but you know. I just because I experienced it, I'm not sure if that's the model of the world. And it was it wasn't until I guess, you know, an accumulation of spirit experiences was was when I went, I surrender, okay, I believe in this. So when was your turning point within okay, like I feel this um, way about Yeah. Uh pretty quick. I felt like it happened pretty quick, like within the first couple months of like and the awakening my awakening experience it was like you know because things were coming in so strong so you know they're coming in hot (laughs) things were just coming in hot you know and it was just like you know um to see my to see my wife how you know experience things you know and have and feel like and change her belief in this type of work that kind of just was like reassuring to me that, yep. Okay. This is, this is what's supposed to be happening. Like, you know, just to, so to see that in her kind of reassured me, you know, and it was pretty quick and, and, and the whole situation was she wanted me to read, do a reading for her. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm just start starting with this whole thing, just kind of learning. And I'm like, I know you so well, what if I'm going to like, you know, everything I, think I'm getting is like, well, she might have told me that 20 years ago, or you know what I mean? She might have told me that 10 yeah. years ago. Yeah. But then I tried, I went ahead and tried and I got like a detail uh, about her grandparents that I would have not known. And that changed it for her. And so that made me kind of in turn be like, okay, <laughs> this there's something to this and I, I should pay attention. Because that was the whole thing I got from my awakening was pay attention now. You're doing this. You're supposed to do this. And it was pay attention. And so that's been kind of the whole way things have gone for me. Pay attention. (laughs) (laughs) Two by four smack. (laughs) Yeah. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, you know, the old WWF guy, you know, just boom, two by four to the head. So, yeah. And what an amazing gift that your wife is and the fact that, you know, not everyone's an easy read and your wife is basically prepared you to deal with that style. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she prepared you to deal with, uh, you know, with skeptics um, yeah. because it's okay if you're skeptical, it's okay. As long as you're like, I'm listening and sure I'm with you with, uh, within this reading. So your, your wife, like primed you to be able to work effectively. <laughs> I I think so. I think I think so. And and she's yeah, she's great with it. And you know, she um just you know she's she always says, Well, I, I wasn't trying to be critical. She just was testing because she, she's a skeptical person by nature. And so yeah. she wanted to analyze it and you know and test a bit and and so, yeah, it's, she did kind of prime me for that, but, and, and it's just a challenge to read like people, you know, so well, like, I don't know about you, but like for her, I just feel like it's hard because I, I know her so well, you know, like best friends, it's hard to read. Does that, is it that way for you? 
I haven't had a lot of opportunities to read family members or close friends, but yes, one time I did and I was getting information and I was like, no, that can't be right. Like I literally was like, no, that can't be right. And it was things that they hadn't told anyone, but I was like, literally like with this person, like every day, like not every day, but multiple times a week, like literally multiple times a week. And I'm like, I guess that's the hard part is the filtering. When you know Correct. somebody, you're you're going you have such a strong bias of your knowledge of this person that when something comes through, I think that's why it's hard because then you're like automatically what well, like that can't be right. That doesn't fit what I have put this person in. That doesn't fit. So that's that's a great point there because yeah, it's like that that is why it's hard. Because it's our own self. We're in our own way with someone like that. I truly believe that. And then also a lot of times there, it depends. You know, if someone approaches you, um, perhaps there isn't that greatest need as there would be if someone comes to a session and they find you. Or they're just curious. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so there's a different energy at play there I have found. But yeah, there's a lot of variables that'd be actually really interesting to talk about. Jessie Cat is asking a question. She's asking about a question with her own experience. She says, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law's brother just passed away last Friday. Crazy thing. I could see that he was what he was wearing, but I couldn't see his face. And he was showing me a rosary. But the question is, since... he recently passed. We can't see their face, right? This has never happened to me. Hmm. Well, I'm going to say that anything's possible, and mm-hmm. that, and that maybe if I were to take, you know, try and just feel for myself, that possibly the circumstances of his passing, he he like hasn't. He doesn't know himself, so he can't really show himself how he wants to be seen or like he needs to he needs to accept and accept, forgive whatever he needs to do to kind of shed everything that held him down in life. And so maybe he's not ready to show his face yet. Like that sort of thing is what my take on it would be. And, you know, there's there's just so much how you can interpret that energy. Like the first thing I interpret is spirit needed you to look where they needed you to look. And so they took away from how you thought you should see it and they brought you to where you needed to see it. And so, you know, you saw what he was wearing in that rosary and that was the message they wanted you to focus on. But there there's more to it than that. Like, you know what I mean? That's just one angle. And then Pete gave you another angle. Yeah, I think I wouldn't focus too much on on that. But like Kelly's saying, maybe what's from what you did see, what's the, um, you know, what's the message there? Um, You know, I think showing the rosary might have been saying to for his family to have faith, to have faith that he'll be okay, And, you know, maybe they had lost, you know, some hope and faith. So maybe the seeing the rosary was you know, hey, just don't, don't lose faith. Yeah, I think it really is. I think Pink uh, Pete is nailing it. Um, it's it's a faith message. Absolutely. I, I think like, it's a validation of, you know, it continues, it continues. And, um, you know, my faith is just an extension of what I knew on earth. And the acceptance of who you are, the acceptance of who he is and the acceptance of who you are. And uh, he he was flashing you some love. Yeah. I think when you use the word faith, it inherently has a connotation that you uh, have faith in something that's positive. When you say a belief, that doesn't necessarily, you know, intend to be positive it could be negative or positive but when it's when i use the word faith to me it's always faith is talking about the good parts of what you're believing in the 
the hopeful parts. You know what I mean? That, and so, like, a, I would, I would definitely have said that that seeing that was a faith message, not a belief message. Because a belief, I think, could be negative. You could believe in something bad. You know what I mean? But if you have faith, doesn't that just have kind of like a positive spin to it? It, in, I think, it implies positivity. Absolutely. That makes sense. <laughs> no, no, no. Hope that, absolutely. Hope that makes sense. Absolutely. I think he's coming to her like with a feeling of like encouragement and positivity. Absolutely. And for some reason, I don't know if my brain is just again, I'm still healing, but I keep it's like uh, it's the rosary. I don't know if my brain is like going, oh, rosary sounds like rose. But as I'm looking at the word rosary, I keep seeing like a rose or a red flower. And that's attached to a sign because I'm getting a symbol uh, attached to it, like a frequent sign, a red rose or a red flower. I'm not sure about that, but I got to talk about it. Um, he was talking. Uh, uh, she mentions he said Tell my sister thank you for my rosary, but he gave me another name of someone going through the same disease he went through. It was hard for me to talk to my mother-in-law about these things, if that makes sense. I think, you know, he's, how can I put it? He's connecting to who you are. He's connecting to who you are, and I think he's honoring your gifts. I think sometimes a lot of, you know, we're not accepted fully by the family and there's conversations we would normally not ever have with family. But when family goes over to the other side, they go, oh, I can get through through you. And I'm saying thank you for being you. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, and, I think. Yeah, I think you're right on there. And I would just say, like, for the part that but it's hard for me to talk to my mother in law about these things. Totally understandable because she has her own belief systems and faith and everything. But instead of saying, don't say it's from him, just have it come from you. Have the message come from you. That would be an easy way to talk to her that might you might get through to her. Instead of if you're saying, you know, he came through and I saw him and I saw his rosary and he said thank you. You know, for somebody who's not really open to that kind of stuff, you know, that would be hard to hear. But if you just say just say it but it's coming from you like you're just telling her that stuff that oh you know he's got he's got this rosary he's you know he's taking his faith with him you know just have it come from you that might help you be able to talk to her about those sort of things a little better absolutely and you know um, it's not a one size fits all. And I think you should always trust your heart in it. That's for sure. Um, when I get signs from people, I, uh, I'm a little vague sometimes. I'll go, oh, I was just dreaming about so-and-so the other day. Um, you know, and I won't say like, oh, he came to me in a visitation. I won't say that I got a message. And I'll just say I, I was dreaming about him and this is what came forward. And a lot of times if you use terminology that people are open to, they'll take it. They'll take yeah, it. Yeah. Meet um, them where they're at. Meet them where they're at and communicate with them that way. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You just got to, I think that's wise what Pete's saying. You just got to meet them where they're at and then you can have the conversation. And um, then a lot more things are possible through that. Um you know, people don't always have to understand us, but if we can find a way where they can understand the message and then we just back away from that, then awesome message delivered. Yeah. So I do the interview backwards uh, sometimes, Pete. So what do you have going on this week? How are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> Any way is a good way, right? Um, well, I'm, I'm starting vacation, so doing pretty good so just got you know we got some things to do still for the holidays uh coming up so i finished my my week at work um and you know just had a good good feeling when i was headed out the door today <laughs> and so that's what i'm doing i'm starting my vacation but you know got still got stuff to do for the holiday next week and and uh so getting prepared for that and 
So um, I got to see um, my older daughters playing basketball. Both daughters signed up for basketball this year. So it was their first time ever, you know, on a team wow. or anything like that. And so um, got to How go. How old are they? They're, if I may seven, ask how they're seven and ten. And wow, okay. Seven and ten, and or thirteen going on thirty, uh, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Uh oh. <laughs> so, so you know, that's that's that was fun. Um, one of my daughters that practiced last night, they ended up getting to do a little scrimmage game with another team that was practicing, and that was really cool. So, um, had a fun band practice. So, that's that's where I'm at. So, we practice every week and. So that's uh, it's always fun to go jam and play music and hang out with the guys. And so that's that's what I'm doing. I'm starting vacation. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> are you, are you going to be traveling? Uh, stay close to home. Like staying at home. You, I don't blame you. Just staying at home. You know, it'd be nice. And uh, you know, we're just gonna have fun with the day and the little monster kittens. You know, will keep us on our toes and. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just have fun here. What um you talked about, you know, um you'll be jamming out. So do you play more than one instrument? I I I've seen pictures of you with a guitar. I don't think it's a bass. I saw a guitar. I mostly I'm it? I mostly play bass. Okay, all uh, right. Yeah, I mostly play bass and play I play guitar. I've been blessed with. Um, being able to pick up any instrument and play it, wow. but, what? but never master it. <laughs> okay, but, <laughs> but still, never master what? one. Jack of all trades, you know that whole saying. So, <laughs> I would say that's pretty impressive in the music, you know. Oh sphere. yeah! Wow. It's, yeah, I just always been that way, and and I think you know. Maybe in a past life I was a musician or something. I don't know, but it's it's just been um, I, I've been very blessed to have a natural ability with it. Now, whether or not I'm good on anything, that's debatable. <laughs> oh come on, you're in a band. You have to be. They would have kicked you out by now. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So. I, yeah, I don't know. That's just how it's always worked for me. But I, I love it. I enjoy it. I love just, I love picking up any instrument and then figuring out how to play it. It's a challenge. Do you have like a top three that I like to play? That I like yeah. to play? Well, bass. That's you know, I've always been a lower register. I played tuba all through school, so I was always like lower register. So bass. Um, Guitar, ukulele, uh, drums. I love playing drums. Um, not that good at it, but I love playing them. Uh, You're probably actually quite good. You're just hard on yourself. Um, I don't know. Piano is fun. It's the hardest. It. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keyboards, you know, piano, that's the hardest to me. That's the hardest instrument. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I oh, like anything yeah. I Anything I can play, I, I like to jam with. But bass is my go-to. That's what I'm most comfortable with. It's the most, um, I understand it the most. I understand the role the most of, of a you know, lower end within a group. So um, I've always been, you know, I like bass. I started as a, gu a guitar player and then went to bass because I wasn't that great at guitar, which is the joke. Bass players are always failed guitars, so... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of validation of that. <laughs> so. I think, you know, your brain just has to work in a different way to compliment, yeah. you yeah. know, every, you know, everyone. It's just, it just works in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. Gosh. Uh, every single instrument you ever picked. That's awesome. <laughs> Seriously. It's like um, I said, like I said, I can figure out how to play it. <laughs> <laughs> not that it's any good but i can figure out how to play I just, the mechanics or whatever so <laughs> i think you're already uh, a step ahead and then some on most of the population with even that oh, <laughs> so please maybe. 
Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take it. <laughs> Speaking of a step, a couple steps ahead. Um, what do you have going on, um, upcoming for even next year, mm -hmm. um, that you'd like to share with everybody? Uh, yeah. And how can people come find you? Sure. Thank you. Um, so coming up, I, if you go to port dot com, if you're watching, it's on my hat here and just .com, you'll see my upcoming tours and public paranormal investigations. Um, and you can find those port gamble paranormal .com. And I'm um, looking forward to, I have an investigation this weekend, one of the special investigations. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, in March, I'm going to be at the Oregon Ghost Conference, March 24th through 26th in Seaside, Oregon. Um, and if people are interested in that, just look up, go to OregonGhostConference.com or just Google it. Um, that's a fun conference. I'm really looking forward to that. The Port Gamble Conference and the Oregon Conference uh, really complement each other really well. And so it's, that's, that's been really cool. So I'm looking forward to going there and then, um, might be going to the OC Paracon. I hope to, um, next October. And then, um, of course the Port Gamble Ghost Conference will be November 10th through 12th, um, this next year. And are you coming? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. 100%. I All am. Right. So you'll be there. I think you're going to like it. It's a lot of fun. Um, so that'll be the 14th annual conference there. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to, I, I feel, I don't know why, I don't know what, but I feel like 23 is going to be a good year. I feel like 2023 is going to be a good year for so many. Like the, it, there's going to be like a shift or something. Like I think, I don't know if it's people connect with each other more. I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like 2023 is going to be a good year. And so I'm looking forward to, um, you know, working through this next year, um, playing music, watching my kids grow, you know, everything. So um, I think it's going to be a good year, but that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to um, after the break, you know, our station break, coming back with the show. I'm really looking forward. I'll hit 100 episodes here soon. Wow. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. That'll probably be sometime in the spring, I think. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I never thought I'd make it past 10 episodes uh, before I'd be on to the next thing, you know. But uh, so I'm looking forward to one the episode 100 and then more and then you know keep going so uh, but i feel like it's just going to be a good year so everyone out there don't lose hope if you've been just hanging by a thread i feel like this next year is going to be good for everybody i really feel the same too i feel like it's been a little wonky and it feels like things yeah. are opening up in whatever way they will i i agree um wow you have a lot going on as always. And what's the best way for people to find you, whether a website or other uh, social yeah. media platforms? Uh, you can go to portgambleparanormal.com. You can contact me through there. Um, that's a great place. Um, on Facebook, look up Paranormal Pete Show. Um, you can you can catch me on there or you can find me on Facebook but um, under my name. But um yeah, check out my show page or or head over to the website, and that's a good way to get a hold of me. Excellent. And then, so Pete, I always and you did you did this naturally and very psychically, but uh, I'll I'll put one out uh, as well again. So just work with me here. I always okay. leave everyone with like the the, the last word, and um, I give that to my guests. So whether um, a an inspiration that you found in your own life or something that's been on your mind lately that you want to encourage people with. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, well, well, thank you. I'll just start by saying thank you for the opportunity to be on your show. It's, it's been fun and we'll have to have you back on mine and we'll go back and forth. And um, we had a lot of fun on my show with you there. And so th thank you for the opportunity. But if, if I were to get the last word, I don't like, to have the last word but if i were to put the last word on anything i would say the time of year we're in people we've got all kinds of stuff going on no matter what kind of holiday you're celebrating or if you're not celebrating any holiday right it still can be a stressful time of year 
but through all that stress, look through all of that, look past it, and, you know, take a look at the, the close people you have that are close. Uh, take a look at it. Make sure you're present for the holiday. Make sure you're there. Like when you, if you're going to your fam, you know, someone in your family's home for Christmas or whatever holiday, and you're like, ah, that's so stressful. Da, 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 da. Just remember the time is valuable on this side. And it doesn't really, time's different on the other side, but on this side, it's, it's, you know, can be linear. So remember, you know, the time we have on this, on this, you know, planet, this place, but be present. And, and I think you'll find you'll enjoy things more. If you're just there in the moment, don't think about yesterday. Don't stress about what's coming up. Just be there in the moment and hopefully, um, you'll have just a great time and, and wishing everybody out there um, from my family to all of you a uh, very happy holidays as well. Absolutely. I love the presence message and happy holidays to everybody. Thank you so much, Pete, for being on the show. You're always full of hearts, insight, and genuineness. I really love your energy. I do. Thank you. So you're always welcome. Absolutely. You're always welcome and you'll be on the show soon. And so uh, thank you, Jesse Cat. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Mary, too, for, um, you know, waving and saying hello with the happy holidays. Pete, once again, thank you so much, everyone. With <laughs> Please go with love, laughter, luck, and don't forget to live. We will see you um, later in December. Um, see you soon. Bye.